It's open enrollment season, and as a financial advisor, I'm having a bunch of conversations with clients about choosing the best health plan for them, but also optimizing all of their employee benefits. And I wanted to create this video about what you need to know about health savings accounts because I so often find that people are missing out on a huge wealth building opportunity in their financial plan in the form of HSAs. They either don't understand the immediate tax benefits or the long-term financial planning benefits of investing their HSA and taking full advantage of it. I often see people who aren't contributing enough or in the wrong health plan, or have just overlooked this as part of their benefits because they're too busy doing their job and they're not focused on these specific wrinkles in the tax code. So I'm gonna simplify those things, walk you through them over the next few minutes, and make sure that you know how these accounts work and how to take full advantage of them. So I'll cover HSA basics, what these accounts are, how much you can contribute to them, the tax benefits available to you, the fact that you can invest your account and let it grow for the future and reimburse yourself later, and finally, some risks to consider before you go all in on an HSA in thinking about your own health plan and your own financial plan. You can skip to any of these different parts of the video, but I will be walking through these concepts one by one so that you can fully understand these accounts and use them to maximum effect. So let's start with health savings accounts basics. These accounts allow you to pay for many medical expenses pre-tax, both federal and FICA tax, that's Social Security and Medicare tax free. Now, some states give you a benefit for contributing to these HSAs in income tax deduction. California, where I live, does not. But even with just the federal and FICA tax, it can make a big difference. Consider this example of a married couple with a $200,000 income. They're in the 24% tax bracket, and they're paying 7.65% in FICA tax. So if they have a $2,050 expense that they need to pay for out of pocket, it's a broken bone or fill in the blank, a health care emergency that they need to fund, in order for them to pay out of pocket $2,050, if they pay tax first without an HSA, they need to earn $3,000. Of that $3,000, $720 of it goes to the federal government in the term in federal income tax. $230 goes out in FICA tax. Now with an HSA, the benefit is because it avoids these taxes, it's tax deductible in that way, or if you pay through payroll, you avoid these taxes. If you earn $3,000, then all 2,050 can go towards that expense and you're left with $950 in your account that can still grow for the future, can go towards your other medical expenses, or maybe you just fund your HSA left and you take that $950, you pay some taxes on it, and you have more money left over for the other parts of your life that you want to fund. So that is, in a nutshell, the immediate benefit of an HSA account. Now, how do you get access to these accounts? They're only available if you enroll in a high deductible health plan. And these plans are exactly what they sound like. They have a higher deductible, which means you will pay a little bit more out of pocket towards that deductible before your insurance kicks in and starts footing part of the bill. The IRS introduced HSAs to help people with those higher deductibles by giving them tax benefits and allowing you to build up a tax advantaged account specifically for healthcare savings. Now these accounts do have annual limits to the contributions based on the amount of coverage that you have, whether you're single, you're covering, or you're covering your family. And some employers will contribute to these accounts to incentivize their employees to be in these high deductible plans, which cost less to both the employee and the employer. And those contributions go towards your account limit. Here's why this is so important. Let's use an example of a high deductible health plan and an issue that I often see. Oftentimes people are opted into a standard health plan. And I'll use an example of Amazon, their 2022 benefits, because there's a lot of Amazon employees and they publish these numbers. Well, if you just opt into their standard plan and you're a healthy young adult under single coverage, your monthly pay deduction is $91 a month. That's coming out of your paycheck to go towards your healthcare. 
annually, that looks like $1,001 that's coming out. And we often don't think about this because it's just benefits, but your paycheck is being reduced each month by $91. Now, if instead of enrolling in the standard plan, you enroll in the high deductible health plan, the employee portion of the coverage is only $33. So that leads to $58 a month in savings. That's more money in your paycheck or $605 per year by being enrolled in that HSA. Now, Amazon goes a step further, and if you're single and you're covered by the plan, then they will put $500 into your HSA pre-tax to seed that account for you. So what this adds up to is in a healthy year, an employee who may not go to the hospital at all, instead of spending $1,000 on their health insurance, which they may or may not see a benefit from, they spend 396 on premiums out of pocket. They end up with $500 in their HSA on top of that and another $605 that they could put into the HSA to save tax-free or that they could put towards other goals that they have. Maybe it's funding a 401k or an IRA or just going out to a really nice dinner. Where this is relevant is for many people, if you can just have a couple of healthy years in an HSA, you can build a buffer against future healthcare expenses. So in this example, the deductible in a high deductible plan for an Amazon employee is $1,500. Well, in one healthy year, I've come out ahead by $1,100. For me, in my early 20s, I didn't understand this. I was just in a plan that would cost me basically nothing out of pocket. I wasn't paying attention to the payroll deductions that were coming out. And as a result, I put a bunch of money into a plan that was really designed to help people who had a lot of health issues and not a plan that better fit my circumstances as a young, healthy person. All right, so that's just the first set of benefits. Immediately, you benefit from paying for healthcare expenses pre-tax, from lower annual premiums, and from building that HSA piggy bank for healthcare expenses. Let's take this a little bit further the second thing you need to know is the contribution limits. And these change over time and have since 2004 when these accounts were introduced. But a few things to know about those contributions. First of all, in 2022, employees can contribute up to $3,650 if you're single covered and $7,300 if your family's covered. There's a catch-up contribution if you're over 55 that allows you or your family to contribute another $1,000 a year into these accounts. And in 2023, along with many other contribution limit increases due to inflation, we saw that employees can now contribute $3,850 if they're under 55, $4,850 if you're over 55, and $7,750 if you are under 55, and $8,750 if you're older than 55. Think about it this way. When you contribute to this account, if you're single and you're making $50,000 a year, if you contribute $36,50, you won't be taxed on the $50,000. You'll be taxed on $46,350. It is reducing your tax liability by contributing to this account. So the more you contribute, the more you can reduce your taxes in the current year. What's the deadline for contributions? You can contribute up until tax day of the following year in your, in your account for the prior year. So it's 2022 right now as I film this. Let's say that I put in $2,000 through payroll over the course of the year, which I recommend that saves you money on FICA taxes, but I've still got $1,650 of my 2022 limit to contribute. I can log in at my employer's plan at the HSA site and contribute directly the other 1650 to max out that account for the year. One final thing about contributions that's pretty cool. Let's say that you weren't enrolled in an HSA plan because you didn't know about it or you changed employers during the year. If you are enrolled in a high deductible health plan December 1st of 2022 and you stay enrolled through the following year, you can use this year's entire contribution limit. So that could help you save taxes now. If you enroll now during open enrollment, you contribute the maximum in December of this year, that could allow you to, for instance, for a family, put in $7,300 for 2022, 
7750 for 2023 and have $15,000 in a health savings account by next year and all of it went in tax free. Now I mentioned this earlier but just so that you fully understand it, if your employer makes contributions, they will count against this limit. So if my employer is contributing $500, I'm single covered, then I can put in 3150, they put in 500, that gets me up to my annual limit. Okay, the third thing to understand about HSA that many employees miss out is these massive benefits. So first of all, these accounts are portable. Unlike a flexible spending account, which you can't take with you year to year and the balances are use it or lose it, with an HSA, when you put money in, you take it with you year to year. Think of this more like a 401k, which stays with you even after you leave your employer and you can uh, you can roll it over to a new employer. That's what an HSA is like. You can also take it with you when you change health plans. So you may have some years where you know you're not going to have many medical expenses. You fund your HSA during those years, but then later on, maybe you get married, you have kids, you don't want to be in an HSA eligible health plan and you want sort of the gold plated HMO or PPO plan that's going to cover more of your expenses. Well, you can still take your HSA with you and use it to fund healthcare expenses in future years under those plans because you took advantage of it before. You also take it with you when you retire or change employers. Now, the next benefit is super important as you think about your broader financial plan. And that is that this is the only federal triple tax free account. There's no tax federally when you put money in, when you earn money in the account, or if you take it out for qualified medical expenses. Let me tell you why that's important. If we think about this and diagram it out for different types of accounts, taxable brokerage accounts, you're going to be taxed before you put money in. The growth can be taxed in the form of dividends and capital gains. And when you take money out, if you have to sell, you're going to be taxed as well. In a pre-tax IRA, it's pretty handy. You put money in pre-tax, same with a 401k. It grows tax-free. But when you take that money out in retirement, you're going to pay income tax. A Roth IRA or 401k is just the opposite. You put money in after tax, it grows tax-free, and it comes out tax-free. What makes HSAs different from any other account is that they have the flexibility that allows you to put money in pre-tax, invest it tax-free, and if you take it out for healthcare expenses, which can be enormous later in life, that money comes out tax-free as well. So this really gives you two options. You can either put money into the account each year and spend it on your healthcare expenses tax-free, and that's a good benefit, or you can put the money in now, pay for your healthcare expenses out of pocket out of your bank account or your credit card, keep your receipts, and let that money grow in your HSA account for the long term, and that's why some people call this the ultimate retirement account. So let me show you what I mean by visualizing a dream scenario of somebody who's able to contribute to an HSA over the long term, invest their balance, and see those contributions grow. In this example, we've got someone who starts contributing to an HSA at age 30, and they're putting in and keeping growing a total of $5,000 per year, and that number's increasing by a couple percent a year. Those contributions grow at 7% per year, and they've got enough money in their bank account that they're able to pay for any healthcare expenses out of pocket, which leaves this account free to grow over the years. So over the course of these 35 years up until age 65, you can see the growth at each decade. At age 35, they've contributed $31,500, and that's grown to $40,000. That's exciting, but the growth is only about 1.3 times what you've put into the account. As we get later into the, the later years of compounding, you start seeing that the growth becomes very exciting. At age 45, you've put in $93,000. You're 15 years into contributing, but the growth has now grown that account to be worth $170,000 for any future health care or long-term care expenses. At age 55, you've contributed $168,000, and now the growth 
has more than doubled the size of your account. It's almost two and a half X what you put in because the growth is up to 442,000. And then as happens in any of these compound interest charts, it's in these latest years that you see that exponential growth. And at age 65, having contributed $260,000, you've almost four X your account balance to a million dollars of tax-free retirement savings. Now you may be wondering, what in the world would I do with a million dollars in an HSA? And I'm gonna tell you some of the benefits of being able to use this account after age 65 for non-medical care expenses in a little bit. But what I want you to see here is think that a couple of things. One is the contributions are great, but it's the investment growth that makes this account so powerful. And the second thing is, even if you can't contribute the maximum or you can't do it for all of these years, why wouldn't you take full advantage of this? Because so many of us, we put money into insurance products, whether it's our car insurance or our homeowner's insurance, right? Or health insurance, we never expect to get any benefit. As somebody who has an HSA, you're putting yourself in a position to be able to pre-fund future healthcare expenses and actually see those dollars back one day and not just lose them if you don't have a medical expense that requires access to the insurance. Okay, the fourth thing that you need to understand about these accounts, why should we invest them? Let's just recap those, those things. First of all, it's the only triple tax-free investment account. So dollars coming out of this would be tax-free if they're used for those medical expenses. Second, because the account is portable, you can keep that money invested. And with many HSAs, when you open it at a place like Health Equity or Optum Bank or Fidelity, even if you change employers, you can keep contributing to the same HSA. As I've mentioned, if you have low healthcare expenses, by investing, this creates a healthcare emergency fund that can grow to beat inflation. This is so important because as you can see, the total contributions, they're going up year over year, but we also know is that medical costs, they tend to swell over time and they've really grown over the last few decades. We can probably expect that to happen and we can expect that the biggest healthcare expenses that we will have statistically are going to be later in life. Why not have an account that can help us to fund those things and fund it during early years when we can use the tax benefits of contributions, but we don't necessarily need that money for a really great health plan that has minimal out of pocket. Uh, I've mentioned these things. I shared about this earlier in the Amazon example, but it's so important to understand that after a few years of HSA funding, you could easily have enough to cover your maximum annual out of pocket easily. So think of this as a short term risk that in the long term actually de-risks your financial plan. Because if I've got $10,000 in an HSA and the maximum that I could have out of pocket for my healthcare plan each year is $6,000, well then I know I can cover it and that the balance can grow for the future. Okay, so I've talked about the benefits of this account. I love using these with clients alongside 401ks and Roth IRAs, especially for my super saver clients who have high incomes and are wondering how to shield some money from taxation. You may be wondering, what is the catch? And let's talk about three risks to funding HSAs that I always look at with clients before we fund them. So the first one is just quite simply, by enrolling in a high deductible health plan, you've got that higher deductible. And ultimately that is a bet on your health. You are retaining the risk of higher out-of-pocket costs and needing to pay that deductible. So how do we protect against that? Well, it's not an unlimited risk. There is actually a cap on what the deductible is and what the out-of-pocket maximum is. So you just need to make sure you have enough in an emergency fund to cover those expenses if you do end up having something that happens, whether it's an appendicitis or a broken bone or all of those random one-off things that can happen that allows you to cover that so that it doesn't become a financial emergency. As I mentioned earlier, by having that emergency fund and then funding your HSA, that will really de-risk that even if in later years of being in a plan like this, you do have higher healthcare expenses. Finally, I would just think of this not in terms of how am I gonna do in one year, but if this is a long year strategy or a long-term strategy, 
even if you have higher healthcare costs in one year and you bump up against that deductible, if you smooth that out over five or six years of contributing, you will almost always come out ahead as long as you don't have consistently high healthcare expenses. So times where these plans might not be as good would be if you're in ill health, if you've got a lot of prescription medications that you're consistently needing coverage for, or if you're planning on getting a surgery like an ACL surgery, or you're having a baby in the next year or two, we might forego that plan for the time being, knowing that you're gonna be spending more time in the hospital in order to go with a plan that is going to reduce your out of pocket. Okay, second risk to talk about. You really don't want to use this money for something other than qualified medical expenses before age 65. The tax benefits associated with this are associated with you spending this money on medical expenses. So if you take money out for non-medical expenses, you're gonna end up paying income tax on it because you didn't pay income tax on the way in, plus a 20% penalty. That could mean that if you take out $2,000, that $1,000 of it, half of it, is coming out in taxes and penalties. That's really painful. However, after age 65, and this is why it's important looking at that previous example where you could have a million dollars in this account, these accounts, uh, if you withdraw money for medical expenses, it's still tax-free, but you can also make withdrawals for non-medical expenses and just pay the income tax. That gives them the same tax treatment as a pre-tax 401k or a traditional IRA, but more flexibility because you can tap into them tax-free for medical expenses at any time. That's why many people will actually look at funding these uh, to their maximum after getting a 401k match as the next account that they would fund because of that flexibility that after age 65, you can just treat it like another retirement account. So ultimately, it's best to contribute to an HSA as a strategic element in a broader financial plan and not thinking of it just as a standalone savings vehicle. Okay, the third risk to consider is that this is one more thing to manage. So it doesn't take that much time to manage, but you need to keep track of opening and investing the account. Know what's going on in the balance. Keep your receipts for documentation if you're reimbursing yourself for healthcare. And it's gonna be part of your taxes when you update those with your contribution amounts. If you don't like this overhead, you can either outsource it, right? Work with an advisor like me or someone else to help. You work with your CPA or just say, you know what? I'm gonna get my tax benefits somewhere else in a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA, in real estate, some other investment vehicle and choose a health plan that doesn't require that administrative overhead. Okay, so in conclusion, let's talk about a few ways for you to take action and maximize your HSA. And if you'd like to talk with me about any of these things, you can schedule time with me at redwoodmoney.com. I've got my meeting scheduler there, or you can just scan this QR code on the screen. That'll bring up the meeting scheduler and we can connect. A few things to remember with your HSA. First of all, as much as you can, contribute directly from payroll. This will make sure that you save the 7.65% on FICA taxes. You're going to get the federal tax deduction either way, but the only way to save those FICA taxes is to contribute directly from your payroll. The second one is to maximize your contributions and consider investing at least some of them. This is especially helpful if you earn a lot of income and you have a high savings rate, and that means that you're looking for how to maximize a 401k, an HSA, a Roth IRA. This is one of those accounts in that alphabet soup that can help you to maximize your overall net worth. Instead of just throwing this money in a taxable brokerage account where it's gonna be taxed up front during the investment and after the investment, consider the HSA as a way to build your wealth. Third one, adjust your contributions if and when you need to. Different from FSAs, you can actually adjust your contributions throughout the year to these HSA accounts through your payroll. So if you need to, you can adjust them either down if you're over saving in it, or for some clients, we won't fund it through the first nine months of the year. And then it's in that last little bit of the year when commissions are coming in, they've got really clear line of sight into their income. We might bump up those contributions to hit the annual contribution limit. Fourth one's very important, just in case you ever get audited, you want to keep your receipts. 
And this is really important because you don't need to reimburse yourself for a healthcare expense in an HSA in the year that you incur the expense. So for example, I could have a medical expense that cost me $1,000 in 2018. As long as I have the receipt, instead of taking that HSA out of my account or that money out of my HSA in 2018, I could leave it in there to grow and invest, pay for that expense out of pocket, and someday in the future when I need $1,000, I just take the $1,000 out, I've got my receipt supporting the fact that that was reimbursed through the HSA, and, uh, and I'm able to reimburse myself later for an expense uh, that I incurred right now or in the past. How my wife and I practically do this with our HSA is we've got a shared phone album Whenever we go to the store, if it's a CVS and we're getting many things actually uh, qualify as these medical expenses, things like band-aids or sunscreen, a lot of things that you wouldn't maybe think of can actually be covered by your HSA. On the receipts, usually there's a little HSA tag or a couple of asterisks that say this is HSA eligible at Safeway, at Costco, at CVS. We'll just snap a photo of that. Same with any subscriptions. Oh, sorry. Same with any prescriptions. And uh, we take that, we put it in the shared album, and we just keep it for later if we ever need to reimburse ourselves. You can use your HSA later. So after leaving a high deductible health plan, you can't continue to contribute more to it, but you can use it later for eligible expenses. So hang on to it, keep it invested. And remember, finally, after age 65, you can use these accounts for non-healthcare expenses. So if you're healthy, it's a wonderful thing. You're not gonna pay a 20% penalty for taking money out for non-healthcare expenses, but you will have to pay income tax on withdrawals. I'll just finish by saying an HSA may not be the thing that as a standalone uh, investment vehicle makes you a millionaire. There's a lot of other ways that you're going to invest and grow your wealth. Things like 401ks, buying real estate, optimizing your cash flow. But this is another tool that is available to you that I consistently see underutilized. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned a few new things and strategies for maximizing this account. And again, if you'd like to talk about it, feel free to schedule time with me. We can talk about your HSA, but I hope more importantly, we can talk about your overall financial plan and how we can make every single tool at your disposal work as hard as possible for you to fund your goals and turn your income into the outcomes that you want. Thanks so much.